Now, um, these things are very similar to each other, okay? The Cartesian plane and the, um, this thing. I call it the complex plane, but just like the Cartesian plane, it has a name that's attached to a French mathematician. His name was Jean Robert Argant, all right? Now, we therefore call this, when you see it's real and imaginary, not real and real, not a Cartesian plane, this is what we call an Argand diagram, okay? Minor, minor difference, okay? But it's important you understand, you label up here, right? You know how in year seven and eight when we introduced quantum geometry, we obsessed over label your axes. It's super, super important, right? Well, there's a big difference between a pair of real numbers and a real and an imaginary number, okay? All right, now, remember we said before, you can write a number as a plus bi, but I said you could also write it as x plus iy. Okay, so now you can see why it makes sense to use x and y instead of just a and b, which, was, which are literally like, can you imagine some mathematicians are like, what's the first two letters I can think of? A and b, right? But then someone said, actually no, x and y is gonna make sense because everything I know about the Cartesian plane can help me spatially and geometrically. Okay. So that's why you'll see either of these, they're equally common. Okay. Does this make sense? Okay, now while you've got an Argand diagram there, let's hijack it a little bit. Let's put some extra stuff on there. Okay. I can now represent any number I like onto this Argand diagram, right? Any complex number. So for instance, if I think of a number like, say, oh, I don't know, as an example. Let's put, where have I got some space on here? Let's go 2 plus 5. Okay. There's a complex number. Your A is 2, your B is B is 1, okay, it's just a single imaginary unit. Now, where is he going to go on this diagram, right? Well, the real part of it, the real part of it, tells me I should go to 2. two. And the imaginary part tells me, okay, where am I on this axis? You told me that B is equal to 1, so I should go up 1 unit, right? That's 3i, so 2, 3, there we go. So that guy there, that point, is 2 plus i, right? That guy there. So now you can see how I can extend my first definition. Do you remember this, right? We said single decimal expansion. That's nice for real numbers, right? But it's not enough for complex, so we expanded it, right? In the same way, every real number that you know about is a point on a line. But complex numbers aren't just points on lines. They're points on a... On an eye diagram, more generally speaking, it's just a plane, anything two-dimensional, okay? So it's a point on a plane. Okay, does this make sense? Now, we need some language here, right? Uh, because you can see, the way that I've drawn 2 plus i demonstrates that you've actually shaded off here a rectangle, right? So therefore, when you write a number like this, 2 plus i, a plus b i, x plus i, y, we give that three different names, okay? Just to confuse you, right? Yeah. The first name is just, can you put it in x plus i, y, form, right? Like we literally just named the form, okay? Secondly, because it's like a rectangle, right? Because it's like a rectangle, we also often call it, this is actually my favorite name, it's my personal preference. We call it rectangular form. Because if you combine any A and B you like, that will combine, that will draw out for you a rectangle, yeah? Lastly, because of this parallel, um, I'm gonna teach you a fancy, fancy word. Uh, I'm gonna stay with this color which is that the Cartesian plane, a pair of real numbers, right? X and Y, X and Y, X and Y. It behaves in much the same way as our pair of numbers here, even though one's real and one's imaginary. So the fancy word we use is we say that the Cartesian plane, the set of a pair of real numbers, is isomorphic to the complex plane, to where you have a real number and a comp an imaginary number combined together, okay? Now because they're so similar, because they're so similar, in addition to being called rectangular form, we also call it Cartesian form. Cartesian form, okay? And all of these mean the same thing, so if you see any of them, write it in this form, compute it in that form, etc., they all mean like this. Yeah? So it's not like different forms, like quadradian form or general form? Oh, Harry, you couldn't have given me a better introduction into the next part. The short answer to your question is, 
correct, right? So when you say point gradient form, general form, uh, interval, etc., we actually want it to look different. But all of these are different names for the same thing. In a similar way that when you say oh, uh, dy on dx or y dash, right? Or alternatively, like f dash x. Those are all different ways to dress up. It's literally the same thing. We just mean the first derivative, okay? First derivative. There's another name for the same object. Does that make sense? So these are all different names for the same object. 